So there's the console, let me just log in. First time through it has to compile the JSPs and so on. That's fine, so let's go to my deployments and we'll see all the JRF stuff in there. Now I'm just going to go install. And what I'll do is I'll go to JDeveloper and I'll go to the My Work. Smart Upgrade was my project. I'll go into Project 1, Generate Source. And then I'm going to go to Final. And that's my loan service here. There we are. I'll go Next. And the defaults will do here fine. Very good. So deployment successful, we're active. Let's just come down to that loan service here, expand that, and here's my web service interface. And I'm going to go to the built-in test client here, come down there, and I can just go there. And this will launch this standard web logic server test client. And I think for this particular application, the only thing that I want to do is to actually add in an email string. I think that's required here. There we go. So let me just apply that. The reason I want to run this a few times is so that I can actually measure the impact of the glue code. Uh, and we'll see that in just a second. So let me put in my name there. It doesn't really matter what goes in that, I don't think, for this particular application. Let me just reinvoke it a couple of times once again. And that's good. So that all seems to be working well. We were able to migrate that across. If I want to uh, look at, analyze that performance, let me just come back and I'm going to pick up the address here for my domain, default domain directory do that. I'll just pop that in here. There we go. And in here you can see the little report that was generated. So we can see that the first time through uh, we, we had some overhead in generating that, that glue code. Uh, but it's to me that's not that significant and certainly once we're up and running then that, that goes away. So for me I, I would probably be quite happy with that. Uh, and we can leave that as it is. So that's all fine. Let's go and have a look at another example now. Um, I'll pop this down. Um, what I can do is I can go here, let's go to Application Navigator, and what I'm going to do is let me create a new project. It's going to be a Java EE upgrade project. And let me just call this Project 2. Once again I'm going to work with an OC4J archive. Let me add in a new one. Now this is one that actually exercises some um, EJB, some entity bean functionality, which is obviously different in, in OC4J from, from WebLogic Server. So let's just open that up, and this is the one I want. J2EE test. We'll go with the same arguments as before, so we're going to generate the artifacts. There we go. All looks good, so here's my project but let's go now we can just look at the report um, and we'll see various recommendations around the code itself uh, but we were able to generate all the artifacts so let's go back to the application server we can go back here to the admin console and let's try a deployment so say you can look at the sort of generated artifacts um, let's go smart upgrade I'll go to project 2 Generated source, test final, there we go. So let's just try deploying this now. And defaults will do on this one.
and we've got an error so we've got a problem and yes well we can look through well we it's fairly obvious here we, we're, we're missing a data source uh, that we need for, for persisting uh, this bean uh, you can probably sort of more or less work it out just from reading that error but of course uh, it might be more complex than that but what we can do is let's use this to have a uh, a look at the uh, another feature of this um, this tool so let's just do a, another new project there we go we'll call this project 3 but this time I'm actually going to um, generate an upgrade report for the server configuration uh, itself so this is the OC4j server on which this app was originally running and I have this set up in here under my um, uh, project again let's just find where that was it's here and smart upgrade no that's the wrong place I'm sorry let's just get down in here OC for J J2EE home config that's where the OC for J configuration is and that's what I want to work with so let me go through and I'm going to generate that now uh, and that's all completed and I can come down it, look at all the the different subsets subsystems that it's gone through and analyzed let me see that summarized here and I can go down and there are a number of recommendations but here's the key one that I can see going through well w this application was using uh, an OC4j native data source named Oracle DS and it gives me some choices on what I can do so I could sort of um, redefine this and rerun it or I could simply create a, uh, a, d a data source in WebLogic Server following these recommendations and then that should work. Now what I need to do first is just need to start up my database here and I'm just using a, um, a simple local 10GXE database and that's already running that's great so I can pop that away and I can just follow these instructions to create my data source so let's do that so uh, I'm going to go into services I'm going to go to JDBC data sources and I'm going to create a new data source with the instructions that are there so let me call this one Oracle DS and the important thing is I have to get the J JNDI name right so I'm going to call this JDBC Oracle DS it's a Oracle database clearly and uh, what can we use for the driver I think in this case we can simply go with Oracle Thin for instance connections this will be fine again it gives me sort of various hints on this if I go back to my recommendation here so um, the key thing is I need localhost 1521xe that's how my app was set up uh, and we're going to use Scott and Tiger here so uh, a number of things that I can do to make sure that I replicate that environment so let's just pop that down the database name is uh, xe in this case I'm going to use localhost 1521 is fine uh, we'll call this Scott Tiger oh sorry and I've already created that account I have that in my database so I can go ahead I can do that I can test my configuration so that's good my test works so my JDBC data source is fine I can go to the next I'll target that to the default server and I'm good to go so I'll go back to my deployments and I'm actually going to pick up um, which was the one that failed J2EE test and we'll have a look to see if I can actually uh, redeploy that so I can do that from the normal place as before and I'm going to try a redeployment and now everything's good um, this doesn't actually have a, an interface so nothing much but we can just have a look at it the application and you can see down here you can see uh, a whole you see this EJP CMP Orion.jar and then you can see the various uh, 
entity beans all in here and if you want you can go back to have a look at the um, the source code in here for, for that migration so that's just a quick look at how this would work using the uh, smart upgrade within JDeveloper now as I mentioned earlier one of the things that you could do is that you could actually uh, run this directly from the command line and what I've done let's just have a look at this is if I go here into my labs smart upgrade folder if I unzip that one which I did into here then I actually have all the things I need to run this from the command line and you could have a look at the readme and you'll see instructions for how to do that so let's just have a look at a very quick example of that let's go here and I'll run this from the command prompt and I can just do this with Java minus just uh, sorry minus jar um, and it's going to be smart upgrade dot jar and then for example I'm going to uh, work with uh, an ear type I think ears is, is the correct phrase and then I'm going to do that and for example I could do a j2ee test dot ear I think this is right let's just see minus target it'll be a 1013 let's just see if that works for me so reading the various rules files now we're processing uh, the files within the j2ee test ear and you see here we're printing out the report uh, exactly the same way as, as if we had done that through uh, JDeveloper. So you've got lots of options there and of course that could then be incorporated into scripts uh, and so on and you could pipe that off to various files and um, analyze that afterwards. So that was a, a very brief tour of the um, the latest 1.2 smart upgrade utility for converting migrating applications from uh, OC4J to WebLogic Server 11G.